We are gonna be talking about data over drama, why people are moving here, why you should not listen to the news. Also, uh, just a little bit of crystal ball where we think maybe home values are heading. <laughs> Hey everyone, just wanna welcome you uh, to the show today. Today we are here with Anthony Penna. We're gonna be talking about data over drama, uh, basically everything real estate uh, related here in the Phoenix area, give you some information, why people are moving here, why you should not listen to the news or listen to it with a light heart, I should say. Uh, and also uh, just a little bit of crystal ball where we think maybe home values are heading just from everything we are hearing. Uh, if you're new to the channel, wherever you're watching this, do me a favor, like and subscribe. Uh, share this with somebody that you know that might be looking to buy a house, sell a house that might need a little bit of information. And like I said, subscribe. That way, every time we post something real estate related, you are the first to hear it. Uh, we'll jump in today. We have Anthony Penna, like I said before. Uh, and the reason why we have Anthony here, uh, I want to bring people to you that have seen a lot of different things in the market. Anthony in particular has worked in the uh, Phoenix area in the title space for uh, about 20 years. Uh, he has actually worked with and works with and networks with some of the best real estate brokers here in Arizona nationwide and also some of the best mortgage lenders as well. So Anthony definitely talks to the best of the best. So as far as information goes, this guy is on top of it. Uh, he's been actually, he was the vice president of marketing for one of the largest title uh, companies in the United States and actually a fortune 500 company as well. And about two years ago, uh, him and his partner, uh, Ryan jumped out, started a company called Navi title here in the Phoenix area. Currently they are number three in that title space, but with the trajectory they are on, they are poised to be number one in the space here. I think in the next a uh, year or so. Uh, and like I said, Anthony is a wealth of knowledge and I connect with him on Instagram. Uh, some of his posts that he puts out are absolutely fantastic. So if you're a real estate consumer or a real estate agent, uh, great content that you can either watch, share, duplicate, uh, rip off and do on your own Instagram. Uh, Anthony also, uh, if you need great food advice, he's the guy to go to. And if you love the Philadelphia Eagles or anything Philadelphia, this guy, I think every Sunday, something about uh, Philadelphia and something I also wanted to mention, this guy also is an awesome dresser. I have a little bit of a crush on his, uh, his wardrobe. Uh, he actually has a custom suit guy that does all of his uh, suits for him as well. So if you need some custom suits or some uh, that stuff, he's a guy to reach out to. So welcome Anthony uh, to the show. Do you have anything else to, uh, to say before we, we jump in? No, I feel like I got to send you an extra check for that nice introduction you gave me, man. I appreciate that. Awesome, man. Well, let's, Anthony, let's jump into it. Uh, Phoenix market, current trends. Let's talk about why people are moving here in the first place. There, there's there's plenty of reasons why people move here. It's, it's I mean, the, the obvious is, you know, our weather, the golf courses, the restaurants, but more, more recently, if you notice in our Phoenix area, we have a lot of jobs moving to the Phoenix area, which is, you know, and it's creating a lot of people coming with, with these new companies coming in. I mean, you know about the chip factory, you know, that's, that's going on out there, you know, startup companies are coming in like, you know, prop tech and educational tech, um, a lot of startups. And, you know, also, and even recently we've had a lot of medical that and biotech that have come in here. So a lot of jobs have been created here. Um, the other reason is, you know, our taxes are really good. I mean, we have good taxes. Now, is that going to change going forward with our home values going up? Possibly. But for right now, Phoenix is, is a well sought after area. And, you know, there's, there's different stats where Phoenix ranks you know, above other countries. I mean, if you want to take, you know, you you look at where people are migrating from, you know, the top three states that people are coming from, from, you know, you got you got California, Illinois, and you know, New York or New York and Texas. People are flocking to Arizona for the for the for these reasons. Yeah, definitely. I think you mentioned that uh you know, Taiwan semiconductor. And if you're not in the Phoenix area or you haven't been up to the North Phoenix area, I mean this is an absolutely massive project 
And it's funny, I actually did a little bit of research going into this as well. Uh, and it's funny, I guess Arizona actually has the uh, name, the Silicon, Silicon Desert, uh, or obviously Silicon Valley in California. Uh, so Taiwan Semiconductor, they're building a huge facility. And actually, once they uh, finish that, it's, uh, they're going to pump about another $12 billion into, uh, into our economy from now until 2029, which I thought was interesting. Um, it's a company I haven't heard of called NXP. Uh, they're in Chandler. They're putting up a new uh, factory, Samsung Electronics, uh, Intel, uh, LG, Virgin uh, Galactic. They're actually building a manufacturing uh, facility in in Mesa that I guess is going to send people to outer space, Procter and Gamble, Corning. So a lot of big companies moving to Phoenix. Uh, I think the big difference, and maybe you can touch on that a little bit because you've been in that space a while. I think what a lot of people don't realize is the economy is so much different now in Phoenix and the Phoenix metro area, you know, than it was, uh, let's go just to uh, 2007, kind of we had the big housing uh, buildup and the big housing uh, kind of downfall. You know, at that point, it seemed like Phoenix was really just a construction and tourism based economy, you know, and since then, I mean, it's, it's so much more diverse. So I think the, the risk of that happening again is, is pretty slim. I, I, I agree with you. And that's a really good point because, you know, I came from right outside Philadelphia and I always worked at jobs in downtown Philadelphia. And it's like you said, the city was the place to work. You know, you take the subway system down there, it's jam packed. When I first moved out here over 20 years ago, and I went down, I was like, ah, Phoenix. And I go down the city and it was dead. There mm -hmm. was hardly anything down there. And then you build the ballpark, you know, you, you build extra, you know, with, with the expansion out there, you saw the college universities, ASU expanded out to the Phoenix area. Uh, U of A expanded out there, Grand Canyon. It's just, it is growing, like you said. And, you know, one point, you know, talk about education, which I was surprised with. Um, I just got this information uh, yesterday preparing for the call. We talk about Arizona State. And what's the first thing you think about when you hear about Arizona State? Um, I'm going to say party, partying, but I don't know if yeah, that's yeah, the right yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah, no, wait. Top 10 party for They actually just won the Innovation of the Year Award for university, and it's now the largest university in the country. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I think you can definitely say that on a size scale. When you when you go down to ASU, even think driving by Air, you know, ASU, when I went there in the late in the late '90s, actually, where I where I used to live is it's no longer even even there. And actually, right right where I used to live is a, a gigantic monstrosity of a building. So, but and, I think they and, and you're talking about that people come to Arizona. The good thing about that with ASU is our Phoenix area was voted number four in the top places for college grads. And why wow. is that? And why is that? It's mm -hmm. because even though, and Gordon, you know this as an agent you know, the rent to income is really high in Arizona. Mm -hmm. It's gone up. And we'll get into that later about purchasing and all that stuff. But the reason is those people are staying here once they graduate because of all the job opportunities mm -hmm. once they do graduate here in the Arizona area. Plus, you know, our sunny climate for those college kids works out pretty good too. Yeah. I mean, I think outside of, uh, you know, realistically June, July, and August, the weather here is, is fantastic. And, I don't want to get too, you know, too far into the weeds, but, you know, Arizona, you know, it's four, three and a half hour, four hour drive down to, you know, Rocky Point, Mexico, you can be on the beach, you can, you know, two hours north, a lot of people don't know you're at 7,000 feet and, and pine trees, uh, you know, California is an eight hour drive or a one hour flight away. So I think just the proximity, you know, for the weather here, a majority of the year, it's ridiculously awesome. And when it gets, it's like where it's an oven, you, you take off and everything's, you know, compared to a lot of other parts of the country, everything's within reach really, really quick. So, yeah. And, and even with that weather there, there, there's a reason like we just discussed the more is why Phoenix is the top place in the country for second homes. Yep. I just had a conversation uh, actually with the uh, today on a, a second home purchase and another client I'm working with actually works as a researcher at Arizona state. And he's actually moving here for, for a job. So just the, yeah. the conversation that I'm having with, with people, why they're coming here, you know, I think weather's seems to be always number one on the list, but so many other factors as, as well. I got a quick story. If we have time on that one, my uncle rest mm -hmm. is all had a good business partner that or friend of his lived in Pittsburgh, PA. We all know Pittsburgh back there. The weather can be in winter time. And he came out here to Phoenix open for business. And you know how weather is back in Pittsburgh in January. And he told me this story. It was hilarious. My first move out of here it says my buddy was sitting in his hotel room after going to the golf course all day, looked at the weather report in Pittsburgh. And it was like six, it was like 
foot of snow, freezing cold, mm -hmm. called his wife up and said, call the agent. We're putting a house up for sale. I'm going to close a deal out here tomorrow to make sure I can do business out here. And they mm -hmm. moved out here within the next six months. Yeah, no, I think those that story, I mean, your story is really specific. And in 10 years of me doing this, I could probably have, you know, on more than two hands, similar story. You know, people say, oh, I, I want to move to Phoenix. We're going to do it in a year and two years. And they come out here for a visit and long and behold, we, we have them, you know, in a house in the next 30 to 60 days. So anything else uh, on the topic of, of people moving here? It's just, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's just a great place. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we talked about the college place. It's a great place for people in their twenties. I had it down here in my notes. It was voted number four for the top place for newlyweds too. I mean, yep. when people are getting married, you know, Gilbert Scottsdale was number four. Gilbert was number 10. Wow. And, and you got to think why are newlyweds moving out here? Mm -hmm. Well, once again, it's not just the weather, it's, it's the housing, it's the employment, like we talked about, mm -hmm. it's incomes, it's, it's, it's access to variety of restaurants, traveling, all that stuff. People are moving here for a reason. I'm an example of it. I grew up in a big Italian family. My whole family lived within a mile and a half of each other back East. Yep. Nobody ever thought I'd move here. And I came out here and now, and I haven't gone back. So, I mean, it's just, once you get here, it's really hard to leave for all those factors. Yep. I mean, I think we can go data and statistics all day on why Phoenix is awesome. So on that topic of data, and I think one of your, your favorite things, and I think you can show your, show your jacket there, you know, data over drama. Let's talk about the news. Um, and I guess we'll probably talk about maybe why you, let's talk about maybe why you shouldn't listen to the news. Maybe that's a good, good place to start. Well, it's it bothers me because headlines do more to clarify than terrify, mm -hmm. and you know that. It, it, there's a reason why they do headlines. It's called clickbait advertising. That's what they do. They come up with a headline, and then you click on it. Or guess what, Gordon? What do you think most people do? If I'm giving you a headline and it's negative, negativity sells. How many people do you think once they click on that headline actually read the whole article? Not much. And usually on those articles, the, the first 75% is to scare you. And like the last paragraph, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad after all. And that's why you need to talk to, like, especially in our housing market, professionals, what's going on right now. And I have a few examples of that one on, like, for an example, you, you probably remember this because you're really up to date on what happens. Do you remember, do you remember Susie Orman in mm -hmm. June of 2020? Yep. How many followers does Susie Orman have? I, I would, I'm going to guess mil, million, millions, millions. And, and they kind of trust her and listen to her. Don't you agree? Correct. Susie Orman came out in June of 2020 with a big post, uh, tweet, everything. Do not buy a house in this housing market right now, because when everyone comes out of forbearance at the end of August, now Susie has her space. Phoenix had, you know, housing has their space mm -hmm. in September. For example, if you buy a $300,000 house, all these people are going to go into foreclosure and it's 2008 again and your house will be worth 150000 So hold off buying. And what happened? Yeah, I, mean, I think I've had that same, I mean, I've had the same conversations for, for 10 years, but particularly in the past, you know, two and a half years, I think a lot of people, the news scared the crap out of people, people like uh, Susie Orman, I even know. Uh, Dave Ramsey has had some, you know, kind of more housing controversial type of things. But I, I guarantee you if everybody that listened to Susie went totally against her advice in 2020 and, and bought a probably even then a relatively affordable house at a two or 3% interest rate right now, I bet they would probably unsubscribe from, from, from Susie, but a lot of people bought into that. And, you know, unfortunately now, and I know we weren't going to talk a lot about this, but you know, Home prices are a lot higher and interest rates are a lot higher. So that that really nice house that you could buy before, you know, unfortunately for a lot of people, it's not even within within reach anymore. They have to move to another part of, uh, you know, in Phoenix in particular, maybe a part somewhere they don't really truly want to live. Yeah, and they, they lost 67% equity from that time. Think yeah. about 67% equity. And and most recently, um, everyone knows Goldman Sachs, right? Mm-hmm. Goldman Sachs, real popular financial bureau, um, ulterior motive on things. What did they say about the far Phoenix here locally when they came out with an article on Jan or January 25th? They said Phoenix, Arizona is going to be one of the top four people to get back to 2008, where home prices are going to drop 20 to 25 percent. They doubled down on that in March. Wow. And guess what? And and 
Now, recently, they've reverted back to that saying, oh, you know what, now, now it's either going to go up a little bit or change. Well, you can't change midstream. That's like that's like the Eagles playing the Cowboys, and they pick the Cowboys to blow the Eagles out, and the Eagles are up 28 to nothing in the fourth quarter, and they say in the fourth quarter with two minutes left, we told you the Eagles are going to win. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I think I've seen, I mean, so many, you know, just kind of, I think, reading, I think I, – I guess I watch the news a lot just so I know what my, my cluster, my customers, clients, homeowners, what they're reading. Um, just because, so when they ask me questions, I, I kind of know where their information is coming from, but I, I see so many, like you mentioned, Goldman Sachs, they, you know, they come out with something months ago and then they change it and they'll change it again and again and again. And it's, it's not just Goldman Sachs. I mean, so many other uh, economists, you know, and unfortunately, they're all, they're all guesses. You know, no one truly knows where things are going to go. Um, but when you're looking at statistics, especially, I think you and I specifically here in the Phoenix market, uh, like I, and I know you and I specifically follow, you know, data driven sources. Uh, you know, there's really no here in the Phoenix market, knock on wood, there's nothing showing that home prices are going to devalue uh, you know, let's call it significantly, you know, could they go up? Could they go down? Yes. Are they going to go way, way down more than likely high probability not. Um, and I think too, uh, with one of the recent graphs that I saw, and it's one of those ones that got, you know, it was put out, call it eight months ago, uh, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all these other, you know, they had their home price predictions and they all predicted pretty bleak or negative, uh, home values for the Phoenix area or even nationally. Uh, and then obviously I think in the, the last month, they, that same graph, those same people, uh, I think, except one of them, they're all showing positive trends in, in home values. hundred percent. And the other thing that I think we should point out, and this isn't a biased decision. It's all about data. Cause that's what we follow. Cause you and I both follow, listen, I come up with data and I'm posting good information, but guess what? It's because I follow people who are a lot smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. That's it, it's, and these people have a history of, being successful, what now they're gonna be wrong once in a while. Yeah, but it's 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 just that data. What we need to point out though is when you see national data, you have to go national, macro, and micro. Our Phoenix market has a history of when it comes to say home prices. Usually we're higher than the national average. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with me on that one? Yeah, no, I mean I think definitely. I mean, then when you go macro micro you know different you go from national to even to arizona to phoenix and then when you know in any metro you're in you go from a metro and then start breaking it up i mean the the data you know if you're familiar here with let's call it the phoenix market uh like right now in queen creek specifically the market's not fantastic and on fire statistically um but you start looking at other other areas in phoenix and you know it's like whoa it's actually it's popping here. Things are selling, things are doing really well. Um, and I think that's the same thing in any, in any market. And I think a lot of times when you're, when we're watching the news, especially if it's more of national news, they're just kind of taking every city, every state, every, you know, little town in Iowa and just throwing it in a big mixing bowl and saying, Hey, here's the real estate data, which, you know, is it data? Yes. Is it real? Possibly. But when you're someplace that's completely opposite from those places, you're like, well, that's, you know, you believe, oh, my market's doing this. Then you talk to, you know, wherever you are, a, a real estate professional or someone like yourself who networks with the best of the best. And you're like, well, that's, that's cool. That's what you're reading. But let me, let me actually show you, you know, on, on paper, what's really happening. So, you know, the one thing that bothers me more about the headlines and you've been seeing it recently and I am telling you right now, you can save this tape, people, and come back to me. I've won a lot of Stake 44 bets on this one. Mm -hmm. If people don't know what Stake 44 is, it's a top steak restaurant in Arizona, one of my favorite places. Shout out to those guys. Um, they've been calling for a foreclosure crisis for the last three years. And most recently, they're calling for it again. You know mm -hmm. how many foreclosures were in Arizona last month? I Copa County? I wouldn't even guess, but it's probably very, 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 very low. 24. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing is though, going once again to the news, and I think this is, I think just a good thing to point out. I noticed the news, when you listen to all these housing stories, they base a lot of things on percentages. Um, and I think going back to 2020, 2021 with all the 
rules and regulations that the government put out, they basically banned foreclosures. So when you go from zero foreclosures to 24 foreclosures, <laughs> when you're looking at it on a, you know, a statistical percentage basis, now that's what the headline says, you know, foreclosures up in Phoenix. I don't even know what the numbers, they'll call it 2000%. And then you're like, oh, 24. And it's like, oh, okay, like big, big deal. Let's, let's move on. No. Way below, way below. And, and plus the other part of that is people have an average now compared to 2008, mm -hmm. where people use their equity as, a, as an ATM. Yep. People have an average of $297,000 in equity right now. Wow. Do you really think some of these people are going to give up that house for that equity? Now, not all of them do, but mm -hmm. 90, over 90% 90 have 10% or more in equity. And the banks don't want these houses back. For, so for all you people waiting for this foreclosure wave and think you're getting a deal, it, it, it's not going to happen. And and that's why I said we are now in a skill-based market. And, that, and that's why I appreciate you having me on here. Um, you and I have known each other for a real long time. And, you know, it's great that you do things like this to educate people, to actually get the truth out there of what's going on. Because you actually care. You want them, you want them to... You want them to make a good investment. You want them to have a good life. You don't want them to listen to the news or the Facebook or YouTube experts who have an ulterior motive on why they're doing things. Yeah, so, like I said, I'm not. So we're not selling a program. We're not selling nope. advertisement. It's basically, hey, here's here's what's going on, and you know, make your decision based on that. So yeah. So anyways, once again, your shirt. I think it says it all. Data over drama, right there. And I so, wear this with pride. I wear this with pride. I, I know that. I think you need to put an Italian flag on there too. Hey, Stop. look, it, it, it is Italian oh. American month and I have my little, look, see right there. Oh, there it is. Nice. There it is. Yeah. Perfect. All right, let's jump into it. And we're not going to hold your feet or my feet to the fire. Let's just talk about, it. I think we touched on the, you know, before in the last article, it's looked like crystal ball. Like where, let's just, we'll speak specifically to, to Phoenix Metro because we're all familiar with it, but where, where are home values going, you think? Um, I, I'm going to start off with saying, do you really want to bet against the champ? Okay. And what do I mean by that? Um, since in the last 70 some years, home values are 73, seven and one. Oh, wow. And five of those seven years where it was not the percentages going up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you can guess what years they were. Yeah, probably 07, 08, and maybe 09. Yeah. 2007 to 2011. 11, and, okay. and I say that because where's the market going right now? It, it, is it going to be a, like, for example, my business right now? We're already preparing for a fourth quarter like last year, and it wasn't that great. But guess what? Homes are still selling. Mm -hmm. Where do I think home prices are going to go? I can tell you one thing. They're not going down. Yep. There's not enough supply out there for them to go down. Builders, we are underbuilt in our market. There's not supply out there. So, and hey, and, and I mean this, it, it, some people can't afford it right now. Interest rates are really high. Mm -hmm. And that's why they need to talk to an expert like you, your mortgage partner, to think of an ulterior, or you know what, have a plan going into next year. It's because there's uh, there are options out there. And I, I know you did a show, I think a couple of weeks ago, it was a great show with your mortgage broker, give you know people different options, stuff like that one. Yeah. I see home prices, they're not going to drop. I think then they're, they're predicting them anywhere from two to 4%, two to 5% yep. going into next year. They're predicting them to go up over the next five years. And like we stated earlier, Arizona is usually higher than that. Mm -hmm. So if if you're waiting just because you're waiting for prices to come down or mortgage rates to come down and you can afford a house, you need to buy yesterday. Yeah, no, I think uh, I was listening to this morning, actually, and uh, Steve Harney, Keeping Current Matters, who we both follow. Yep. And, he, and he was mentioning, this is a national, kind of more national statistic, but I think from 1980 till now, if you, you know, if you bought a house, that appreciation over, that period, I think was like 4.9%. And, you know, there's some outliers in there. And obviously 20, 20, 21, where, you know, things were like appreciating at 20%. And everyone's like, you know, a lot of homeowners are really excited. And then they had, you know, your call your 07, 08 in there where home prices were depressed. But like you said before, you know, in that, in that span, there was literally like, I think two or three years where home prices went down. Um, the other, you know, years, home prices have gone up. And when he was talking, I think a lot of people get disappointed in, 
you know, 2%, 3% appreciation. You know, and he was saying about how people get all excited about 2020, 2021. He's like, we don't, we don't want that. Like that, you know, it feels good at the time, but in reality, it, it's not really what, you really don't want that in a housing market. And I think we're feeling that the effects of that now, you know, home prices have, they've cooled. Um, some areas, maybe they've gone down a little bit, but realistically as a whole, they're still trending upwards just due to our, our lack of inventory. But that's the thing, when, when you go from, I, you know, I think he used the analogy, like you're on a freeway going 100 miles an hour and you slow down to 60, you didn't stop. It just, you're, you've decelerated, but you're still moving forward. So the same thing with home values. Everyone's like, oh, home values are going down. No, we're just not, you're not, you're not seeing that market appreciation in your neighbor's home selling for a thousand, you know, million dollars over asking price. It's like, Hey, you know, the neighbor, your neighbor sold their house for 500,000. Then the neighbor next to him sold for 505, or, you know, so on. It's, so it's a more gradual and I think more sustainable, sustainable market. So I just want to kind of touch on that. Cause I think it's like the conversation I have is like, Oh, housings. You and, know, it's like, and, and I just... think it's, and if you listen to Steve, which we do and David Childers over there, KCM, they called that the unicorn years. Mm -hmm. It's unicorn years. Yeah. That's not going to happen again. I mean, is your house going to appreciate house going to appreciate over the long term? Yeah. It has data has shown that one. Mm -hmm. Are you going to appreciate 20 to 30% in a year like then? No, you can't accept, but, but you know, it's, but buying a house, you know, everyone talks about the recession. They're all worried about a recession. Mm -hmm. Buying a home is recession proof because what happens? You have the same payments every month. Correct. It's not it, it's not going up because mm -hmm. recession went up. You are locked into that payment. And in fact, if rates come down, you can even go lower in that payment. So you want to talk about recession proof where you can make money and it's a long-term investment. That's mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's a long-term investment. That's it's recession proof and it's a long-term investment. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why I had you, you know, you've been through, you've been through, I've been doing this for 10 years. You've been in it for about 20, um, but seeing diff different market cycles and, you know, and we've seen the highs, the lows and a lot of different highs and a lot of different lows. And I think what you were saying to unicorn years in the past, you know, I think we got some unicorn years in pricing, call it 06, 07, 08. We had unicorn, you know, in pricing. And then we also had the same in call it 2020, 2021, you know, we were kind of hit with call it a double, a, you know, I don't know, a double unicorn. We saw a huge influx and a huge increase in home values, but then we saw interest rates go to, you know, twos and three percents, which a lot of people said, you know, I think in their minds, like they, that became the, the norm or the standard. And then in hindsight, I think you and I can both agree, you know, could they happen again? I, I guess I wouldn't out outrule it. It could, um, outside of our control, but the realistic, the realism of those coming back is probably, I, I would bet it, I would bet against it if I were myself. So I think just looking at, yeah, you said, if you can buy, if you can buy a house, buy it. If you don't like the interest rate, I don't think anyone likes it. I think right now it's at like, you know, at the time of we're doing this, it's, you know, set called 7.5%. Does anyone love it? No. Um, you know, but like I said, when interest rates go down, you refinance out of it into a better, you know, whatever, whenever it gets to a point where you, it's palatable to you refinance into that newer interest rate. And more than likely they're going to cool off from everything that I'm, I'm seeing. But the thing is when money gets cheap again, and I think 2020 and 2021 were a fantastic uh, example of this. When money gets cheap, people start buying. And when people start buying in droves, home prices go up. So today, you know, especially in the fourth quarter, and I think you were saying it in your mark, your statistics in where you're in your space, you know, it's, it's a little bit slower right now. A lot of home sellers are out there saying, Hey, where are the buyers? So today's where you lock in, you lock in the home price. Cause once you lock it in and it's, it's done and then just wait for interest rates to go down. And like you had mentioned that prior video that we did, there's ways to get lower interest rates in today's market. So there really shouldn't even be an excuse not to, there's I, I'm realistically not an excuse not to buy a house today. And, and the other thing I like to point on that one is, is, and if you can't, if you can't afford it, I'm, we're not saying do it. We're saying if, if you can't talk to special, but if you are waiting, you got to remember this one. If you're waiting, how many other people are waiting for rates to come down? There was a stat that was shown. And I think it, this is nationwide. If rates go down to six, it's going to bring in another 4 million buyers. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think we definitely, yeah, we, we, I mean, we noticed that when rates dip down, I want to say like maybe eight months ago, you know, they went up and then when they dip down closer to six, I know specifically like our team's business, like all of a sudden we're like, whoa, all these people came out of the woodwork. And then when they went up, it slowed down again. So I think just to your point, when they go down, it's, you know, things are going to, things are going to pop. 
Yeah, it's it's it, it, housing's housing. That's why you know I want to reiterate again. Don't don't, don't listen to the news. Yeah. Don't listen to Facebook expert who's who's an expert in housing one day, and then he's an expert in medical the next day, and then he's an expert in food the next day. And there's YouTube guys. Go go to a. Go, it, it's not a pressure set. You, you need to be educated in this market. It's it's not the unicorn years. You just need to be educated. Listen to the right people. And that's, I mean, that's, it, it, it's, the, it's the bottom line. I, I hate seeing people lose out because they listen to an idiot or their drunken cousin at the Christmas party or Thanksgiving party yeah. coming up who, 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 who's been renting for the last 30 years. So that's, yep. yeah. Awesome. Well, there you go. Well, Hey, thanks Anthony. Uh, with Navi title and make sure to connect with Anthony. I think the best place maybe is at Instagram to connect with you. Yeah. It's a, Instagram's the best place. I got, yeah. I have both Facebook and Instagram, yeah. um, get my YouTube channel started, but yeah, Instagram's the way to go through. I'm, I'm posting data two to three times a day. Like awesome. I said, from people a lot smarter than me and yeah. from my own little Arizona touch into it. Yeah. So appreciate you having me on. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. Connect with Anthony and make sure you're watching this, uh, like, and like this video, subscribe to our channel, just share it. Uh, I think the more this information gets out to people, I think anybody, because everybody has some place to live, I think this it's going to go miles and give a lot of people a lot of information. But it was Anthony, once again, pleasure having you on today. And uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Fly, Eagles, fly. All right, buddy. Take me back. Thank you.